Good morning Malaysia Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dan salam sejahtera Hari ini kita akan bersambung Dengan dua lagi model pengajaran Dalam episod yang lepas Saya telah menerangkan Contoh-contoh model pengajaran Bagi model pengajaran personalis Dan juga social Untuk episod kali ini Saya akan menerangkan Contoh-contoh model pengajaran Bagi model behaviorist Dan juga information processing saya Dr. Hafiz dan anda sedang menonton Dr. Hafiz Explains. Okay, next kita pergi kepada information processing. Okay, dalam information processing ni, uh, one of the model yang saya nak ketengahkan adalah Hilda Tabas Inductive Thinking Model. Ah, okay. Dan Hilda, Hilda Tabas Inductive Thinking Model ni is very, very effective. Very, very interesting. Kalau kita tengok inductive, inductive thinking ini, apa maksud dia adalah identifying patterns within small details to form big ideas. Ah, anda pernah tengok kan contoh TV program nama Sherlock Holmes ah, yang ada Benedict Cumberbatch tu. So, apa yang Sherlock buat? Kalau contoh dia tengok orang ataupun situasi, dia akan tengok very all of the details. All of the details yang ada di the, on the crime scenes, dia akan inspect each and every one of it. Then dia, and based on his interpretation, dia akan make a generalization. Uh, dia akan buat uh, something called uh, identifying patterns. Uh, dalam banyak-banyak data-data yang very very small data dia akan group together dia akan tengok ok so this is what happened uh, so itu Sherlock Holmes punya that, contoh Sherlock Holmes lah ok dan siapa Hilda Tabar ni sebenarnya she was an architect and she is also a curriculum theorist and also reformist and she is also teacher educator dia adalah juga student kepada John Dewey aa uh, John Dewey ni pun salah satu nama yang paling-paling berpengaruh dalam bidang education. And she believes that education should be about teaching student to think rather than regurgitating facts. Kalau kita tengok macam kelas biasa lah, very typical direct instruction punya lesson, a very typical lesson, kita explain the lesson's big idea, kita explain dulu. Kita bagi, 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 bagi pada student and then kita demonstrate, lepas tu kita bagi student practice, Lepas tu, student practice uh, examples in group. Lepas tu, and then student practice in, uh, in, the, in the independently, individual. Uh, so, itu macam uh, a typical kind of like lesson lah. Lesson yang uh, student-centered. Atau, I mean, sorry, teacher-centered. Teacher-centered punya lesson. But then, this inductive thinking is different. Uh, sebab kita belajar inductive thinking, it's a bit different. So, how different it is? Kita balik kot. Uh, okay. Teaching using... Inductive thinking ini, dia start dengan providing students with unorganized details. Ha, kita bagi detail, detail, detail banyak-banyak unorganized. Kita akan campur aduk. Ha, okay. Yang penting di sini adalah untuk train students how to think critically. Ha, this is where critical thinking and creative thinking comes. So, ask we ask the students to look for patterns and form categories. Uh, dalam banyak-banyak details tu kita suruh student duduk and then categorize kan see the patterns within the data tu see the patterns and categorize all of the data and and from there use the patterns to develop big ideas concepts theories okay so this is what inductive uh, model is all about okay from ground up from The big data, how students synthesize to make concepts, to make theories, okay, to make meaning out of the data. Let's move on to the next one, which is the last one. Behavioral model. And for this behavioral kind of dimension, uh, saya akan menggunakan hunter model ataupun mastery learning. Uh, hunter model ni dia lebih kurang macam mastery learning and hunter model uh, was developed by a school principal named Dr. Madeline Hunter uh, ok so Dr. Madeline Hunter ni develop hunter model ni ok ataupun mastery learning tu 
to ensure that the teachers give learners no opportunity to get it wrong. Dr. Madeline Hunter ni berpendapat bahawa relearning materials and skills akan mengambil masa yang lama, yang lagi lama daripada uh, learning it right the first time. Uh, okay, so that's why dia kata give them the right way the first time. Uh, tak perlu explore-explore ni. Kita tengok, mari kita tengok Hunter model ni macam mana. Uh, dia ada uh, seven classic steps. Okay, seven classic steps dalam Hunter model ni. Mari kita tengok. The classic seven steps. The first one is state objective. The first and second tu dia boleh interchange lah. Dia boleh interchange. You nak state objective dulu and then buat anticipatory punya set. Meaning set induction lah ni. Uh, ataupun nak buat set induction. Lepas tu baru nak state objective. This is the, the state, statement of the objective is to letting the students know uh, ke mana lesson tu nak pergi. Giving the students a general idea lah about apa uh, lesson itu is all about. Okay. And then anti anticipatory punya set. Contohnya, set induction. Getting the students ready or excited to accept the instruction. Uh, okay, ni macam set induction lah. Okay. Okay, the next uh, step, number three, is input modeling ataupun model practice. To make sure the students get it right the first time. This is where uh, pengajaran berlaku. Very direct, direct, direct kind of like instruction. Um, Cikgu mengajar. This is very teacher-centered punya approach. Okay. Cikgu mengajar, 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 mengajar. And uh, and after that, number four, checking understanding. Okay. Masa tengah mengajar tu, cikgu boleh watch students punya body language, students punya answer and to really gauge the students understanding. Dapat tak dapat? Boleh tak student student to replicate apa yang cikgu tu ajar? The keyword here is to replicate ataupun duplicate what has been learned. So, the next one, guided practice. Okay, guided practice ini uh, berlaku selepas instruction, selepas cikgu mengajar dan cikgu nak tengok uh, student tu dapat tak dapat. Make sure that they have uh, they have it right. Uh, so, this is the guided practice. After guided practice, independent practice. Independent practice ini bermaksud student diberi data set yang baru ataupun information yang baru, dia boleh tak replicate, dia boleh tak adapt. Uh, dengan uh, apa yang telah dia ajar tadi uh, apa yang telah cikgu ajar tadi after that closure bring it all to a close go over it again ulang semula uh, ok ulang semula and make sure the students really get it right uh, so this is the behavioral punya model uh, using hunter model ataupun mastery learning so that is all for today Ok, kita sudah sampai ke penghujung episod pada kali ini Anda telah belajar contoh-contoh model pengajaran Untuk episod yang akan datang, kita akan mempelajari objektif pengajaran dan pembelajaran Jadi, sehingga kita bertemu lagi, saya Dr. Hafiz dan anda sedang menonton salah satu episod daripada Dr. Hafiz Explains Assalamualaikum dan salam satu Malaysia Assalamualaikum